There are a few things in life more exciting than receiving a big parcel in the post. But everyone knows, on YouTube, no great unboxing is complete without some coffee b-roll. Well, not in Yorkshire. I'm talking tea. Ah, that's better. Now, I have here the Canon EOS M50. Now this is Canon's first foray into 4K mirrorless technology and I could not be more excited. I really want this to be the game changer that I hope it is. So let's not waste any more time and let's get it unboxed. So it seems that 4K is no longer a dirty word for Canon with this camera showing so much potential. But can it actually realize any of it? Or is it all just half-baked ideas? Let's find out. So inside the box we have a warranty leaflet, an instruction manual in a hundred different languages. Delving deeper we have the camera body itself, a charger, a charger cable, an alarmingly small battery and a strap which of course I'll never use. So let's have a look at the camera itself. Undeniably small, but it has a reassuring weight to it that promises it's not a toy. I have to say it is hideously ugly, like something's reversed into it, especially by comparison to the likes of stunning Fuji or Olympus cameras. Thankfully though, it's not all about looks. So let's remove the cap and see exactly what really matters here, that sensor. This being a Canon APS-C size sensor, we can expect a crop factor of 1.6 on this little chap. But that's enough ogling, it's time to test this small but mighty beast. So I'm here out and about in my hometown of York to put this thing through its paces. Roll that B-roll. Somewhere above The city lights You're falling in love Still aware You know it is true That you are lost And this is a clue Love is forever Love is forever Yeah, you know what? This thing does have a few flaws, but I'm willing to ignore those. Everything you saw there was shot at 1080. I know there are some issues with the 4K and I'm going to address those in a future video, but right now it really does not bother me at all. It's small, it's compact, it means it can go anywhere, it's really unobtrusive. I'm not likely to get stopped like I was when I was carrying a big DSLR and a heavy lens around. So much more inconspicuous. And that autofocus is so good. Honestly, I don't even need to think about focusing anymore. With the Panasonic G80, it was always a concern. Is my shot gonna be in focus? Is the focus just gonna be wandering all over the place? But here, no. I know every single time that it's a winner. And that really is one of Canon's amazing selling points. If it wasn't for the autofocus, I'm not actually sure I'd be considering this camera. Of course, this is not a pro camera. There are some downsides, such as aperture and shutter control. If you're interested in shooting video and you're shooting either 24, 60 or 120, you're gonna to wanna to lock down that shutter speed. But of course, the one dial on the front of the camera is only gonna to work to control your shutter speed. But at the moment, I haven't found a way, and I don't think there is a way to map that front dial to actually controlling aperture instead of shutter speed, which is a real shame. But body only, this camera is only 530 pounds in the UK. So I guess you can't expect everything. The future is promising for this little fellow. And who knows, in a month, maybe two months time, I could be selling the G85, a camera that's previously been considered fantastic for video. 
if I can learn to trust this Canon, if it gets it right time after time, especially with the autofocus, maybe there's a chance that this could be my go-to travel camera, both for stills and for video. After all, those stills look gorgeous. 24 megapixel sensor, so much better than the Panasonic, which is only a 16 megapixel sensor. So it meant having to carry two cameras around. On a first look, I'm very impressed by this camera. And I cannot wait to test it out some more. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.